Uh, hi everyone, thanks for joining. Uh, please, anyone confirm me like whether I'm audible or not. Hello. Yeah, you're audible. Yes, you are audible. Okay, thanks yeah. for the information. So, and today is uh, like a free session, and from Monday we will be having a paid sessions, and from Monday we will finalize the time, and uh, sessions will be starting on time only. Like today we have waited like five minutes, six minutes now. So from Monday it will be on time. I will share my screen very quickly. And please someone confirm it too. It is visible, right? Yes. Yes. I dropped out from the session unexpectedly. One minute, let me reclaim my post. Give me one minute. Yeah, I'm good now. Uh, anyone please confirm me like whether my screen is visible or not yes it's visible thank you uh, so today we will start uh, yesterday we have seen demo today we will start a uh, one topic and some theoretical part of the omni studio like since this is very first session uh, we'll dig the like basics of the omni studio okay so let's talk about the introduction and I'll cover three, four slides theoretically. And this theoretical part, everything I will be covering practically, I will be showing practically in coming sessions. Okay. Some names you might not understand right now. Uh, just remember it. And when we start the practical sessions, I'll come back to these slides again and I'll and I'll show you what I told exactly. Okay. So what it says is Omni Studio provide a suite of services components and data model objects that combine to create industry crowd applications, creating guided interactions using data from your Salesforce org and external sources. So I have shown some examples yesterday. So Omni Studio will provide predefined components. Uh, for example, yesterday I have shown some example where it will show path, okay, where it will show some buttons that we not need, need not to create uh, by coding, there are predefined components. We can directly use them and also we can reuse them. So regarding data, we can use the data from the Salesforce and we can use the data from the external sources also. That is the like main use of Omni Studio. And you will be seeing everything practically. And with Omni Studio, what can you create means? You can create Omni Scripts. And again, what is Omni Scripts? What is Data Adapter? We will see in coming sessions. Omni scripts, which contain interaction logic, where user can interact with the Omni script or interact with the screen. So that we can create using Omni Studio. And similarly, we can create data raptors. Uh, that means just dealing with the data. Data raptors is nothing but the dealing with data. And we can also create some flex, flex cards, integration procedures like that. Okay, and flex cards, yesterday we have seen integration procedures also basically dealing with data but advanced version to the data raptors. Uh, integration procedures which bundle server-side operations. This is the main use of uh, integration procedures which will do server-side operations, not client-side operations, okay? Uh, what is that we will see? And flex cards which display data and launch actions. Actions are nothing but you can say simply buttons. For example, if I click on one button, Omni script should launch. If I click on one button, I should navigate to one page. So that kind of actions flex card do everything we will see in the theoretical se uh, practical sessions. Okay, just remember these things. And let's talk about the Omni Studio architecture. 
okay there are three layers in the omni studio architecture one is digital experience service management and developer experience digital experiences consist of flex card and omni script so that means digital experience is nothing but where user interacts with the ui we call it as user experience right so what users can see is the digital experience by creating something on the flex card by creating something on the omni script user cl can click on those buttons user can see some data visually that is digital experience which we can build via omni studio and there is something called service management service management consists of two components integration procedures and data raptors so these two components cannot seen by the user but it helps flex cards and omni scripts to get the data okay uh, for example data raptor fetches the data and that data will be passed to the flex card so that user can see the data on the flex card with the help of data raptor or integration procedures so that means only for the data back end purpose we can say simply and developer experience simply we can say there are some tools in the developer experience like idx build tools or workbench tools uh, there are lot more tools simply we can say it is for the deployment purpose okay there are many ways uh, some some projects might use ant migrations uh, some project might use you know auto rabbit some project might use git like that some projects might use manual deployment and for omni studio we can do manual deployment also i'll show that Th this is the uh, overall structure of the architecture we will see what is what one by one let's say for for digital experience uh, two primary uh, users like digital experience includes two primary user interface components what are the two primary user interface components means flex cards and omni script flex cards displays contextual information contextual information means um for example if i place flex card on account page uh the details of that particular account record based on the context for example if i open uh, one account for example uh, some tcs account it will show information of that particular tcs if i open some amazon account it will show uh, information of that particular amazon account so based on the context dynamically it will update the flex cards and show okay that is flex card and again it is user interface omni script as i shown yesterday you know on screenshot it is guided part to the guided path to complete a business process i have said one example when you want to fill an application form there are m number of pages you need to fill some education details and click on next you fill some address and click on next there is a guided flow path according to the business we can configure that and what is what we are going to see in detail in later parts okay and there is a note here these declarative tools provide rich user interaction experience that are easily understandable yesterday we have seen easily we can configure and user also can understand easily because these are in line with the salesforce okay if you see color and everything uh, it looks like salesforce inbuilt components only right whatever we drag and drop the components so they are built on salesforce lightning web components which run inside the salesforce and improve ui performance so whenever you create an flex card or whenever you create an omni script by using drag and drop when you activate it it will generate automatically an lwc code in the back end automatically we do not need to know uh, write anything so since in the back end it is already lwc uh, it it turns in inside the salesforce and it can improve the ui performance because we know uh, lwc runs inside the salesforce right it is not new thing in the back end it is lwc only but without writing lwc code so this is a digital experience which is simply a user interface and there is a service management service management i said right uh, it is back end the kind of thing which which feeds the data like that uh, service management layer includes data services to read write transform calculate and track the data with within and outside of the salesforce for example i want to fetch some records and show it on the screen okay that is read and if i want to save some record if user enter something and if we click some button it should save to the salesforce that is right and transform means from one format to another format from json to xml xml to json like that also we can do calculate means it can calculate data for example uh, 
under under particular account there are 100 opportunities sorry 10 opportunities you want to calculate uh, what is what is the amount of each opportunity okay what is the value of each opportunity at uh, that we can calculate by using uh, data raptors or uh, integration procedures track the data track the data means changing the data for example if user changes some data uh, uh, this service management layer can track it okay that is within the salesforce outside the salesforce that again we are going to see in the practical sessions and what are the available components in the service management means data raptor which is used to retrieving transforming and updating the data and there is something called integration procedures uh, which works on the server side and that executes multiple actions in the single server call the so what are actions we are going to see but uh, uh, for time being consider integration procedures are advanced versions of data raptor there are many more advantages uh, that we are going to see in uh, coming sessions like when to use data raptors when to use integration procedures uh, what are the advantages of integration procedures over the data raptors what are the real time usages in the project that everything we will see in coming sessions okay and uh, let me go to next slide so this is the uh, experience layer uh, it is simply you can consider it as you know uh, deployment uh, cycle uh, there are many tools like uh, idx build tool workbench and in omni studio like omni Uh, manual deployment also you can export uh, one particular flex in your org without using any tools project to project uh, your deployment tool so based on that uh, it will vary uh, deploy an apex class works so generally what procedures you will also have manual deployment and that we are going to see practically in coming sessions this we have covered and regarding trail arc uh, we need an org to practice and everything right that i will provide the link and everything on monday so that you can create your own work uh, with uh, lifetime access and you can practice it like once the session is done you can practice the same in the same day if possible okay now uh, before going to the next slide uh, please ask me like if you have any questions so far Uh, one note is you might not understand completely because some words are new for you that you are going to understand in coming sessions. Like when we talk about data raptors, I'll come back to this slide and I'll show you this. This is what we discussed and this is in line with what we written here that I can show you uh, when we start the sessions. Okay, uh, am I good uh, for going next slide? Because from here, the actual, the, uh, actual thing starts. I think I'm audible, right? Uh, anyone, please? Yeah, yeah yes. Uh, thank you. So, JSON. Uh, generally, many institute JSON will not be covered. Because many of you know JSON, but I will give some small intro regarding JSON. JSON is very important. Uh, while dealing with Omni Studio components. Why it is very important means Omni Studio components communicate by JSON. For example, if I want to pass some data from data raptor to flex card, how can I pass means? The medium is JSON. Omni Studio components understands JSON and XML languages, but 100% of the times in real time, projects we will use json only because json is easy to understand right easy to understand easy to configure also uh, how we can do that that we will do, do see in today's session only so json stands for uh, javascript object notation uh, what what is the use means it is a text format uh, for storing and transporting the data 
transporting the data means i said no from one component to another component uh, it can be trans it can transport the data like with like large number of data also it can transform with ease and why it is easy means uh, it is easy to read easy to write machine parses json machine generates json and everything easy with the json so this is very important this is the prerequisite uh, before going to the actual omni studio components okay let's understand simple json structure so based on that we can start our next sessions okay i'll open some json editor i'll start with basic i know many of you know json but let me spend some time on this one so always any json code will start with start and ends with flower braces basic example name sales force uh, this is key this is value we know that always in double quotes this is text since always in double quotes generally we will use in javascript like that this is key this is value right but in omni studio what we will do is this is node we will we will talk this as node and this is value okay and if i want to add few more uh, entries uh, you can add some some age with the double quote and this is one more node and let's say this is let's say some some 50 since this is number no need to add uh, double quotes right and if you want to add some boolean uh, is is some is some is developer some random i'm taking true okay since this is boolean no need to add double quotes for per text we will add double quotes for number uh, for boolean values something like that we never add double quotes right many of you knows this one this is like basic one let me take one more example So, and again, this is another JSON structure where name says, John, this is easy to read, uh, right? For humans and for Omni Studio components also, it is easy to read and it will parse this language, you know? So age is 30 and marks. In the marks, there is an array, okay? In the array, there are two entries. One is English, one is marks. So here, name is a node. John is a value, age is a node, that is value, marks is node, but array, with array, okay? Array always represents with square braces, right? So marks is a node, node of array, you can say, with two entries. Uh, one is English, one is maths. And you can also read it like this. This is parent node, this is child node. Because English is inside the marks, right? So again, this is parent node, this is child node, okay? You can sometimes, you can also call it as root node. Any questions so far? Oh, what is array? array? Array is nothing but which has list of values. See, if you see here, we, we have two, two values, two entries, right? Array is nothing but which has two list of entries or list of objects. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Whenever, uh, whenever marks, marks generally in school, we might have marks as like many subjects, right? It has many subjects. When Whenever there are multiple entries, more than one, we will always use array, right? So th this is the basic structure of the JSON and we need to follow it. If I, if I make any mistake here, it will show, throw some error. So this is the standard syntax you need to follow. Good. And this is, uh, you can search in Google like JSON editor or JSON beautifier, any, anyone. Uh, you can write your JSON code here. Generally, we will not write JSON code. System will automatically generate. Omni Studio automatically generates for us. I am telling for our understanding. That's it. In general, we will not write any JSON code. Okay, 
and let me go back to the slide. Uh, the I same have a thing question. I have read. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So you said we don't write on in JSON, but when we do the mapping, should we use yeah. the uh, OmniScript JSON code and then map it? Yes, we will use OmniScript uh, JSON code for mapping, but we will not write. System will generate for us and we will just map it, that's it. Line to line, we never write it. I I'll show that, mapping like how it will generate. Yeah, it will map automatically sometimes and sometimes in unique cases, we need to map manually. That I'll show it, how its system will generate. Okay. Okay, and have put the same image. Uh, this is the node, this is the parent node. And under the parent node, we have sub node or we can also call as child node. And forecast is the array. Under that, um, we have two entries or two objects called as array elements, okay? And it will be called as node or root node, I said. This is also called as key. And this is the value. Like going forward, you will understand in a better way uh, with real-time examples. For time being, remember node value. Uh, this is parent node. This is child node. That's it. And this is the array. And I have some JSON, uh, which I taken from the real time project. Uh, this is how JSONs will be when we work in real time projects. This is a small one, actually, there should be big one. I'll make it simple to understand. Okay. I'll expand this first. There is something called quote. We can call it as node or we can call it as parent node or we can call it as root node because this is the starting node, right? So under that, there are two items. So if I expand this, uh, this is zero and this is one, okay? Uh, this is the nothing but first item and this is second item. If I expand this one, the first item, uh, there are QLI details. Under that, we will have QLI details and in inside QLI details, we have four items. And this is the quote ID, quote, under that we have ID, right? That is quote ID. And under quote, we have name. That means quote name. And if under that, we have QLI details. And under QLI details, we have four QLIs. So if I expand this, there are four QLIs. First QLI, product stage, product category, product name, QID. This is second QLI with similar data. Third QLI with similar data. Fourth QLI with similar data. So these all data is from quote, okay? And if I expand another one, which is I have another another QLI details, I can expand this and I have QLI details one, two, three. Uh, this is how uh, real-time JSON data will be generated. No need to understand what is what, just understand this is node, this is child node or sub node, and this is array and inside the array, there are one object or one entry, second object or second entry, third one, fourth one. That's it. No need to understand what is what and everything in detail. Any questions so far? And no. don't worry, no need to write anything. We are good, right? Okay, I'll, I'll manually I'll write a basic code. Let's say we all know Salesforce basic, right? Generally, in account, there might be having multiple contacts, right? Multiple contacts. We'll try to write a JSON for this one, okay? Always starts and start with flower basis. First one. I want to name my account. So account name. Account name is some Salesforce. Okay. Under account name, there might be multiple contacts, right? So what I'll do is I'll create a parent node which says account details. 
start and okay uh, under account details i have account name and under account name i should have multiple contacts right okay what i name is contacts so multiple contacts means always square braces so inside that entry 1 entry 2 let's say two contacts okay first contact name is some some uttej and some phone is and again don't worry no we, no need to write this one just for your understanding i am telling some xyz and similarly second contact name is some kumar and some phone some okay now you understand so what we wrote is we are telling the system that there is one account with two contacts if you see here account details i am giving name under account details i am having account name which is salesforce under this account there are two contacts inside the array contact one with name uttej and some phone number contact two with name kumar and phone number so that is this is we are telling the system like there is an account with two contacts so we need to understand how to read it that's it any question so far just please uh, feel free to ask if you don't understand this it will be difficult in upcoming sessions no need to create just reading if you know how to read it then we are good yeah it's clear okay now let me go back to the slide uh, this is the prerequisite site uh, now we understand what is json javascript object notation it is used for transporting blah 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 human can read and write it machines can parse it. we have seen some examples we know this is key or node this is an array this is array elements this is value this is sub node or child node this we are good we have seen this example now let's start with the data raptors today uh, from here our actual sessions will start so what is data raptor and practical session also we are going to see today data raptor is a mapping tool that enables you to read transform and write to the salesforce for example i'll make it simple in the apex you know right insert update and if you want to query some data we will use soql query so these three things can be done by data raptor if you want to insert some data into the salesforce we need to use data raptor if you want to update any particular account for example i want to update the phone number of that particular contact or account i need to use data raptor if i want to fetch some account details or contact details i want to use data raptor okay and what are the types of data raptors means extract data raptor turbo extract transform load these are the types of data raptors uh, extract data raptor means a kind of sql query uh, if we want to as name suggest when we want to extract some data for example i need all contact details which are present in salesforce database i can use data raptor extract to extract all the details and there is similarly turbo extract turbo extract extract are same but there is small difference extract can extract from multiple objects turbo extract can only extract data from one object but why we are using this turbo extract one object can be done by extract data raptor also right but why we are using turbo extract specifically means there are few advantages that we will see when we are discussing turbo data raptor and transform data raptor generally this we will use very rarely uh, when we want to transform the data json when we want to transform the format of the data json at that time we will use transform data raptor and load data raptor means like insert and update if i want to save the record if i want to update the record at that time load data raptor will be used each and every data raptor we will be seeing uh, with live examples data raptors typically supply data to the omni scripts we know that what data raptors do supply data to omni scripts integration procedures flex cards and everything 
okay and what is the typical data flow means uh, omniscript calls data raptor omniscript means that guided flow is there no right now you might not understand this just remember it omniscript calls data raptor extract to get the data basically omniscript needs a data raptor to get the data and omniscripts interact with the user to capture changed data for example there is an application form uh, where i want to there is a phone number i want to change it i want to update it instead of 91 i changed it to 92 at that time when, when we click on save data raptor load will be called and that will update the data okay uh, insert also can be possible these things we will see practically then we you understand right now just will directly jump into the extract data raptor this one i'll show practically first and then i'll come back to the slide so we know we need to go to the app launcher you can search omni studio and here from here you can open omni studio data raptors or you can search directly data raptors omni studio data raptors which you, then also you land in the same page this is the omni studio application okay uh, if you create and your org for the first time you will all you will be already getting some pre created data raptors if you want you can have a look into that one okay and this is the finding page where you can search for your data raptor when there are hundreds of data raptor with, you can search with your name this is importing this is for deployment this we will be covering in later part uh, there is two buttons import and export so that will be used for manual deployment okay and here if you want to create a new data raptor you need to click on new uh, when you click on new you will be redirected to this page what it is asking is data raptor interface name you cannot give random names you cannot give random names omni studio all salesforce is recommending to give names in some particular format okay because it's, it is easy to manage when there are large number of data raptors what is the format means you will see it if you see it data raptors interface name can contain letters numbers dashes underscores but no spaces this is the common one and data raptor interface name must be unique and for the only scripts there are more number of rules for data raptors it is straightforward uh, names letters numbers contents but my recommendation is for example if you want to extract data from account right extract account details so your name should define what data raptor is doing so that we can understand easily okay uh, it is already in use okay so by seeing this data raptor name i can understand this data raptor is used to extract details of the account so there are four types of data raptors which we already discussed first we will see extract data raptor we know what is extract data raptor means to it will extract something just click on extract and input type is always json output type is always json this we'll see later uh, generally it's like kind of permission set you need to create some permission set if if needed you can give that name here and description generally in real time projects what we will do is uh, this dr dr means data raptor this dr is created as part of some xyz ticket right in real time we will do like this okay and then click on save now you will be redirecting to this page that means a data raptor got created this is the name which we have created and the interface time type is extract for others it will be load turbo extract like that and input type and output type is json here we didn't give any value and the description we have given here we have some edit option edit option is nothing but when we click you can edit these details 
quick match i'll tell you clone if you want to clone the data raptor you can clone it straight forward export export and import also i'll show you uh, before that i need to do some changes here and there are few tabs here extract tab formulas tab output options and the last one preview and we have some input we have which and every option i'll show practically and we have some show all object fields checkbox also first of all we'll start with a basic example i want to extract all the account details it is very simple just like sql query only first i need to define an extract step like this from which object i need to retrieve data account select account extract output path you need to give some path because all the data should be stored in one path right i am giving account only same name i am giving basically you can change it also since i want all the details what i'll do is id is not is equal to null so that means all details i'll get where id is not there is no record with id equal to null right so i'll get all details i'll put some limit limit let's say 10 okay so in this step what i am telling to the system is extract data from the account where id is not is equal to null limit 10 simple sql query only select id from account where id is not equal to null limit 10 this we are good but what fields we need to extract let's say i want name field i want website field how should we define that go to output just click on plus so if you click on here extract json path already i am getting some data search for name so that means from account get name just select it you need to give some output json path any path you can give okay uh, you can give like account name if you see here json structure got updated here if you don't want account name let's say my account name if you see here json structure got updated here when you click on execute you see json structure got created which is in array format you see here square braces uh, record 1 record 2 record 3 record 4 like that 10 records i got so it got created json structure automatically let's say i want one more field go to output add here what i want let's say i want website okay and in the output json path let's say uh, acc website that means account website any name we can give here same name as api field name also you can give for your understanding i am giving different name now click execute see for the first record there is a website that's why it is showing node for the second record there is account website that's why it is showing road for other record the website is null okay the, uh, let me put id also see here uh, i'm getting make it three so that i can understand easily so I'm fetching three records. Uh, first record has these details. Second record has these details. Third record has these details. And this is live data. I'll show you in the in the in the uh, database. Let me copy the account ID. So this data I'm getting right. If I update this to Apex. Two, three, four, and save it. It is asking some required fields. One minute. Okay. 
if I execute here, you see live data we got. And for this record, it is not showing ACC website, right? Let's try to update it and we will get the live data. Uh, how we are going to use means that we will understand in the upcoming sessions. There is no website here. That's why it is not populating. You see here, it got updated. So it got in array form. Now, I want, this is, let me copy here. Let me put it here. Now, this array consists of three account details. Account detail one, account detail two, account detail three. And this is an array. Now, I want to name this array as something like, uh, Salesforce account details. I want to name it something like this. Is it possible uh, in our data raptor? So that means we are referring all three records with one name. Is it possible means? Yes, possible. So we should bring all the records under this node, right? This is very simple. Just go to output. In the output JSON path, before ACC ID, you observe here in the current JSON path. Before ACC ID, just place this node. Okay, and now you understand. Under this node, I got ACC. Okay, and similarly, under this node, I want ACC website. Just add it. That's it. It might be a little confusing in the first session, but it is very easy. You need to just practice it. That's it. Okay. Now, if you see, we, we have changed the structure. Under Salesforce account details, we bought ACC ID, ACC website, ACC account name. If you preview it now, the whole structure will be changed now. So what we call this, this we call this as parent node or root node. And under that, we have three records with key value values or key value, key value pairs or node and values. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. I'll take it as no. Let us go with one more example, then we'll, you will understand very simply. Let's say I have one account, which is this one. I want to fetch these details only. Single account details I want to fetch. How can I do that? Delete everything. I'm deleting everything. Now you'll understand how easy it is. I want to fetch only this record, only this record details. Go to extract. What I need to do, account, because this is an account. What is extract output JSON path? Give any name, which is account. Filter, what is the filter? How we are referring this account? With ID, right? Copy ID equal to give your ID in double quotes. Now go to output, just name name. So from the account, it is fetching the name and putting it to this node. You can observe here. If I click on preview, I'll be getting details of this particular account. If I want to fetch, for example, there is something called employees. Okay. Or there is something called website or rating. You can fetch any field. Go to output again. Search for number of employees. Uh, you can give any output a JSON path. I'm giving EMP. So node got updated here. If you click on preview and execute, see, I'm getting the details of this particular account. What I did is 
just added account ID is equal to this one. And in the output, I have mentioned the fields. That's it. I'm expecting some questions here. Just feel free to ask. I want my session to be interactive, so. So in the same way, we can fetch opportunities on yes, the product yes, opportunities yes. as well. Yes, can, can you guide me? Can you guide me? I want to fetch contact details now. Can you guide me? No problem. Okay. If it is wrong also, no problem. I want to fetch these contact details and I want to see, uh, wait, I'll tell you fields. I want to see last name and email. Okay, last name and email. Uh, can you guide okay. me here? Go to output. Uh, first, we need to define the step. Extract yeah, object. Step. Yeah, correct. Next. Anyone, please feel free contact. to find. contact because we are fetching it from contact. And then what is the output path? Any name. Filter, yeah. And what is the filter? Where ID is not equal to them. No, no, I want to fetch only this particular contact details. OK, then ID is equal to that ID. ID is equal to this particular ID. And then I want to fetch last name and email. OK, then go to output. OK, nice. Plus. OK, nice. And then. What field I want to fetch? Email. Email. Last Perfect. Email. And I fetched this email and I want to put it in some node, right? So we should yeah. define some name to that uh, node, right? Any name, basically. Tell me one name. You can give the same contact, right? Yeah, email we can give or contact email we can give. Yeah. Or now I'm giving email. So it got updated here. And I want one more field, which is last name. Plus, again, plus. And plus. OK. Last name, click here. Last name. The same thing here, output. Present path last name. Last name. So it will get updated here. So this is the current JSON output path we created. And next, what should I do to preview? Then this. Go to the preview tab. And oh, execute. Man. So you will be getting last name and email of this particular contact. You are good now? Yes. OK. Now I'll, I'll tell some uh, interesting observations here. So we have defined our object here and we have given our name where ID is equal to this particular ID. In the output, what it will do is generally in the output, extract a JSON path. So that means it, it will extract some data. Let's say, let me take other field which has some value. Uh, we have created date, right? When we select contact colon created date, it will extract the date in the contact. It will go to created date. It's not there here, but it will go to created date and it will extract. So we, we need to show some place to store it. So here we need to give that name so that these data will be stored in output JSON path. So created date. Any name you can give, not, need not to be same, any name you can give. So it got created. So we are extracting the data from contact object and the field is creating date. And we are storing that data in this output JSON path. OK, now when you click on preview, you are going to get that date also. Right. So if you observe here, there are some responses performance metrics. Browser, 407 milliseconds. Server, 154 milliseconds. Apex CPU time, 148 milliseconds. So these are the 
time taken to execute in the browser level, server level, Apex CPU time to execute this particular uh, transaction. And if you observe here, there is something called a debug log. I said no, data after extract is nothing but an SOKL query in the back end. If you observe here, it automatically created an SOKL query. See, select, created date, ID, email, last name from contact, where ID is equal to this ID. Till now we have defined, but limit we didn't define, right? If you see here, uh, if you see here, limit we, did, we didn't define, but why we are getting limit here? This is very important question for certification. Yeah, it's default limit whenever you get yeah. more. Default, that means data raptor extract in single transaction, it can only extract 50,000 50. records only. You got it right. So this is very important question uh, in certifications. So more than 50,000 records we can execute for that, there are another options like integration procedure, but data raptor extract, the maximum limit of record uh, extraction is 50,000 records. If I put some limit here, it is odd. Basically, we are fetching only one record. Uh, more than that, it will not possible when we give ID, but, but that is default it is taking. You can also add limit here. The default will be changed here. If you see here. Right, and there is something date. This is the execution time and date and query results. Right now we have only one record, right? That's why the query results are one. If you are fetching 10 records, you will be getting query results or 10 like that. Okay, and there are some timings that we don't need. And there is something called errors. When we get some errors while we are executing this data raptor, that will be tracked under this tab. Okay. Uh, and input parameters, how we need to use, I'll tell you. And uh, till now, any questions? No. No, right. Okay. And we have order by also, for example, there are 10 records. Maybe I'll show that. Not equal to null. So I'm fetching some five random contacts, okay? Some five random contacts, contact one from DR, contact two from DR, contact three, test contact 11. Uh, when you want to, when you want to order that by name, by last name, right? Okay. So if you see here, uh, B, 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 C. So it got ordered by last name also. In output tab, uh, we have last name. And from that, it got taken order by last name. If you want to order by email, if you want to order by created date, that also it will work. Right now I'm deleting it. And this is how we, we should delete it. And there are extract step, one more extract step, for example, I need to fetch account details under that I need to fetch contact details. So that also possible like fetching multiple objects in single data JSON that again we will see that tomorrow. Right now we'll stick with basic levels only. So hmm. All right. I'll explain these options also. See, let's say right now I am fetching these details. Let's say I want to fetch phone number. Right now phone number is null here for this particular record. Okay, even though I want to add it here. Phone, contact phone and phone. Now you should tell me even though I have added phone here, I am not seeing that node. Why? I have added phone here. 
but I am not seeing that node. Why? Because there is no data in the phone, right? But there is a specific requirement. I want to see the node saying that right now data is not there. That's why it is not showing up. But I want to, even though data is not there, I want to see the phone details like this, which says phone is null. That means phone data is not available. How to do that? For that, there is an option in the data raptor. Go to options. There is something called overwrite target for null inputs. Just click that checkbox. One minute, it is not allowing me to do. Yeah, okay. Now, if I click on execute, now you see, even though there is no data, it got fetched. Uh, generally, in real time projects, people like uh, freshers or beginner level people who are new to Omni Studio, they'll get confused, even though gen generally we will not deal with single record, right? We will deal with 10 to 20 records. They'll cut, get confused, even though I have added phone detail here, or I'm not getting phone here. Because when the phone data is null in the back end, it will not show up. To show up the data, go to options and just you need to click on override target for null inputs. Okay, okay I think. I think we are almost one hour today. Just I'll take so 10 more minutes today. And this we are done. Let me delete it. Otherwise, let's keep it. I'll tell one shortcut. Let's say, let's say uh, you should answer now. I want to fetch all fields data from this contact. What should I do? There are approximately 25 fields. What should I do? I should see all fields data. What should I do? Anyone? No need to add plus filling details 25 times each and every field. No, there is shortcut for that. I'm deleting everything for time being just to show you. So we are adding the extract path and go to output. There is something called quick match, right? Just click on quick match. Just before that, go to extract. There is something called show all as object fields, right? Click here. You'll be getting all the fields with APN names available under that contact. Copy everything. Copy everything. Copy. If you want, you can delete some other fields. Also, go to output. Just click on quick match. Before that, uh, expected JSON output. In the expected JSON output, I am expecting like this, right? So paste all, all the uh, AP names here. So this is what I'm expecting. I'm telling system that this is what I'm expecting. So now click on quick match and click on auto match and click on save. That's it. Everything got updated automatically. You can check that by clicking preview. One minute. Why we are not getting data or query is correct. Let's debug it. Select so and so, so fields from contact where ID is equal to. Yeah, see here, and this is good example. This is how you need to debug it. So here, here they are saying query error. You can read it. What they are saying mm -hmm. nested, nested exception is common dot exception API query exception. So these fields are not supporting basically. You can remove some fields. Go to output again. You can remove some fields by just pasting it here. Let's say I want. Let me delete this. Uh, 
one minute, my screen is not going up. Yeah. I want only these fields. I have deleted the fields which are not supported. Just paste it in current JSON. Quick match. Same. It didn't got it. Let's delete it manually, no? What it is mailing, mailing this one. This we need to delete. Because we have queried all the fields, no? Some fields are not supporting. Is it because and of dependence? Yes. For custom fields, we need to append underscore underscore C, right? Custom fields we need to add manually. Uh, this is not a fresh org. We have added many custom fields. Uh, that's why I'll create a fresh org tomorrow. And again, there are a few more. Uh, this org I have used in last sessions, that way there is unwanted data. Uh, and again, generally we will not select all fields, but you can copy the JSON and you can filter the required fields and you can click on execute. Uh, it is showing some more fields. Uh, right now you can ignore it. But my, my point is, uh, you can select the fields like like this. You can create the simple JSA, data JSON. You can hmm. you can tell the system like these fields I want to export. Okay. Here, I think I should delete, but it is taking some time. This I'll show you clearly tomorrow. Yeah. The house I added. Still, it is taking all fields. 60 fields it is taking. But ignore it. Basically, my point is, I'll show you that tomorrow. When you want to add multiple fields, let's say 20 fields, 30 fields, 100 fields, no need to add manually. Just you need to... Uh, keep the expected JSON uh, field values, API names by copying it from here and you can delete some dependencies. You need to change some, you know, custom fields with underscore underscore C and when you put it on uh, expected JSON and when you click on quick match, it will automatically match and it will show up here. I'll take some small example tomorrow and I'll show it up. So you got my point, right? What I'm trying to say. Yes. Yes. And similarly, if you want to export this data raptor, there is something called export. You can click on this export button and click on next and done. So this whole data raptor will be exported and will be created in JSON format. For example, if I, if I sent this file to you, you can import hmm. this data raptor in your org. So this data raptor will be replicated in your org. No need to create fresh one. How to import means just go to Omni Studio data raptors again. Just click on import. What I'll do is I'll, I'll delete it. This is our data raptor. Now I'll delete it so that you can understand. I'll delete it. So there is no data raptor now. So what I will, let's say this is the fresh org. Yeah, let's say your org. Uh, I shared the file. You have downloaded your file in the system. You just need to import here. Click on browse. Select the file in your system. Click on next, next, and next. And it is importing. 
and once it's done your data adapter will get into your system whatever the configuration i have made everything you can check in your system and that is the beauty of omni studio components not only data adapter you can do this similar kind of stuff with flex cards integration procedures omni scripts also like for the integration procedure you mm -hmm. can since integration is linked with the lwc so you should be doing the same steps with the visual vs code right uh, can you repeat your question i didn't get it completely so integration procedure there there will be a lot of uh, buttons involved with the lwc buttons and all right no no integration procedures i'll show you one example maybe you can understand how it will look integration procedure is also same like data adapter only okay this i have created previously this is small integration procedure let me take the big one this is not so small Oh, okay. Let's, let's, so this is how integration procedure looks. There are some lot of actions like charter action. Means if you want to post something in the charter, Salesforce charter is there, no? Like you yeah. can use this component. And inside the integration procedures also, you can use data after extract, data after post, data after transform. And it is nowhere related to the actual LWC. Okay. So email action. For example, if I want to send email, for example, uh, when a contact is inserted or when user clicks on some button, I want to send an email. Okay. At that time, I can use integration procedures. Remote action. Remote action means calling an Apex class from integration procedure. HTTP action means, you know, right? Actual integration, uh, API yeah. call. So for these kind of things, integration procedures will be used. Okay. Thank you. Okay. For this, we'll have time. So in, hmm. in, in extract, right now we are discussing in extract regarding extract data adapter, right? I'll tell you what is pending that I'll cover Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. One is extract data from multiple objects, conditional cases. Okay to extract data from single object with multiple child objects. Okay, that means I want to extract data from account. Along with that, I want to extract data from five contacts under that account in single data structure. Okay, similarly, we need to see extract data from multiple objects with multiple child objects. Let's say 10 accounts along with that, each account should consist of related contacts or 10 accounts and each account should consist of related opportunities. So this we need to see, these are some kind of advanced level and also how to map IDs. mapping ids that means i will fetch account details only i should see the related contacts only that means the link is for the related contacts and the parent account we should map the id like contact uh, account id and the account id in the contact so mapping the multiple ids there should be link right parent id and in the child id there are parent ids right in the child record so mapping of the ids we need to see that is very important and also formulas. This is very, very important. This tab, this, this single tab will take whole day. I mean, one session. Uh, this is pending. And we need to see what is check field level security. That means FLS in the data raptors. And there are some topics like some miscellaneous topics, like uh, for example, if you see here, how to use quick match, when to use quick match, uh, how to manipulate the current JSON output. And uh, 
JSON restructuring. JSON restructuring. We have seen right. There is a large number of data JSON. Uh, we have restructured like by giving some node name here. Let's say ABC details. Like this. Generally changing the format of the JSON. These all are pending in data raptor extract. And then we will move to data raptor turbo extract and then data raptor load and then data raptor transform so these are the pending things uh, we will be cover on monday before that if you are joining monday i'll give some small assignment please come with that i'll also show that assignment is fetch any five fields from Opportunity object with specific record ID and name it as my opportunity details so that means i'll provide json also so your format json format should, should look like my opp details and inside it i want name any random fields abc and field two field three field four field two field three field four Field five, like this. I want. Yeah. Right. Some other fields. Yeah. Like this, I want five fields. This name should be exactly like this. My opportunity details. And if you succeeded in that, you can also try giving whole this uh, whole JSON structure giving another name. Like from Salesforce. You are succeeded in that, you can try this also. So you are, you are adding two dummy nodes. These two are from the Salesforce. You are adding one more node. On top of it, you are adding one more node. First, try this one. I should be seeing any five fields. Make sure you will fetch five fields from different different data types. One is text, one is data um, date, one is checkbox, uh, uh, one is multi-select quick list. Okay. Make sure you will fetch different different fields. This is one type. And if you succeeded in that, just try this also. You got my point, right? Yes. And these both, I'll show it on Monday. And from Monday, we will be having proper format for our, for our session. Like each day, what we need to discuss that I have a timetable as per our timetable we will be following hope i'll be seeing everyone on monday like if you don't have any questions you can drop off if you have any questions we can discuss you can stay no questions uh, I'll stay. You are saying something, Nikhil? Yes, I'll stay. I have some questions to ask you. Yeah, okay, okay. You can ask if you are okay. You can ask it now.
No, no, not about this. I just want to ask uh, about the course Okay, time. okay, Yeah. I got you. Course timing, course timing mostly same time. Like if majority of you wants a different time, then we can plan IST morning, like 9.30 or 10 a.m. in IST. Otherwise, same time, 9.30 p.m. IST. That is this time. Nine That, that thirty we can PM IST IST. would be Well, what is your uh, flexible time? Tell me. We can plan accordingly. any time after six After? PM EST. Six PM EST would be no, it's too early. Okay. So you you will be available nine thirty AM IST and nine thirty PM IST, right? Not exactly 9.30 a.m. Uh, from 9 a.m. IST to I will be available till 12, 12 p.m. IST. And night also from 9 p.m. to I can plan anywhere between 12 a.m. IST. But that we can plan. Don't worry about timings. We will make sure uh, you are comfortable with the timings because we need to take other timings into consideration, right? Don't worry about that. Uh, Lavanya, you have any questions? Actually, yes, and I want to speak to you personally about the page. Okay, you, you can contact, I think you have a number from faculty, right? You can contact them. Uh, they'll give my number or they'll put some conference. They'll make some arrangements to talk. Okay. Okay. possible sorry it is is possible it possible yes okay yeah yeah it is possible i will be available okay okay thank you Atish. yeah thank you munna munna you have any questions uh Okay, then if you have any personal questions, just contact anyone from the faculty. Uh, they'll help me to contact me. Uh, we can talk if, if there is anything specific. Yeah, have a great day. Bye.